Hello, everyone. This is Deb McBride, and welcome to my astrology podcast. Today is April 16th, 2019, and I am broadcasting from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica. I apologize for the tardiness. Usually I'm a few days ago, but I was away. And actually, it's a good thing that I waited because we have to begin with Saturn Pluto. And Saturn Pluto, which I've been talking about for a little while now, and I'm going to continue to talk about, Saturn and Pluto are very close to one another and they are becoming conjunct. And we are going to see the retrograde of both of them this month. However, when they get together in the sky, as they are now in what we call a conjunction, which is a blending of the two energies, because they are in the same place at the same time, meaning they are in the same sign, and that being Capricorn, when they get together like this, it is extraordinarily powerful. And the one thing we need to keep in mind is that Pluto is a planet of the collective and all outer planets are involved with the collective and what happens in the collective unconscious and what happens to us collectively. And so Saturn isn't necessarily a collective planet, but when it gets involved with outer planets, it's definitely in its, uh, it's in another realm. It's really working along with the collective. So yesterday on the 15th of April, we had uh, a rather large event in Paris, which was the fire at Notre Dame Cathedral. And I bring this up because the, the cathedral is an icon in Paris. And whether you've seen it or not, you've heard of it, and you know that the Notre Dame Cathedral is a, a significant uh, par Parisian place of visitation and worship and it's a significant architectural structure. It's been around, I think, since the 12th century. So this is a this is a pretty big deal when it goes on fire. And what I want to say about this in the Saturn Pluto sense is this is an old, old building. And this is something that we expect is going to be around a long time because it's been around a long time and it's survived a lot, a lot of things. The French Revolution the invasion of, you know, during World War II. So this is, this is a significant building going in through a significant transformation. And this is in, you know, the Christian religions, the Christian faith, this is Holy Week. And it's the week before Easter. And here we are, Sunday was Palm Sunday. And here's a very iconic uh, symbol of faith going up in flames. So this is something to ponder. This is something for all of us to ponder uh, collectively and personally. And really what's really on my mind is that Saturn and Pluto change the landscape. And they do this when they get together. Inevitably, some part of the landscape changes. And this is a very typical example of the landscape that shifts. Now, Obviously, they're going to save it. Obviously, they're going to do some reconstruction. But Pluto is the planet of transformation and reconstruction and renaissance. And Saturn is the planet of structure. And Capricorn is the sign of structure. So here we are with a very iconic old structure. And Capricorn rules old things, antiques, anything in antiquity. Here we are with a very old structure that goes up in flames and they're investigating. And obviously this is a symbol. This is an archetypal symbol for faith, for where we stand with our faith, where the world stands with faith, you know, and also this iconic symbol of Paris. Now, if uh, you have witnessed other Saturn Pluto experiences, you will know that there are many iconic things that happen during Saturn Pluto transits that forever change the landscape. And 
you know, the first thing I thought of yesterday was ah, Saturn Pluto because I would, <laughs> I'm like the rest of the world and I'd like to be a little naive and think, ah, nothing huge like this is going to happen during a Saturn Pluto. And thankfully no one was in the building and no one was hurt. And I know that there were, uh, I know that there were some things with firefighters, but, but my point is this is a very strong Saturn Pluto moment. And even though they're not exact, they're very close. They're, they're buddies now. They're hanging together. And when they are together like this, and the last time they were together like this was the early 80s, 1983, 1982. This is something that we have to pay attention to because where are we reconstructing something in our lives? Where is something that is old and outmoded and done and that we're getting rid of in our lives? And where do we need to be, as I've been saying over and over again, empowered in our lives? Notre Dame will be rebuilt. Um, the Parisians will see to that. Um, the French will see to that. It's, however, not going to be the same thing. There's going to be modern technology in there with ancient technology. And so there is the blending of the modern, there's the transformation of Pluto, and there is the structure being rebuilt from modern times, making it stronger and more durable. Um, so that's what we have to do. We have to re-empower ourselves, make ourselves stronger and more durable. However, uh, the opposition of Saturn and Pluto brought us 9-11 in New York City. The square before that in 1993 or so brought us the first bombing of the World Trade Center. The uh, Saturn-Pluto opposition in the 60s brought us a whole lot of stuff because Uranus was involved. So, you know, there was civil rights movement and, uh, you know, the experience of um, the Vietnam War. This was 1965-66. So this one wouldn't include, you know, you know, any of the assassinations that were preceding this or after that. But it was really the landscape of the Vietnam War and the civil rights movement and the sexual revolution. But there is some inevitability to Saturn Pluto. There is some inevitability to something that is going to need restructuring or revamping or complete um, renaissance. And so here's one piece of it. Thankfully, they're going to salvage it, salvage it, salvage it, budget, it, but it's a huge thing to happen. And it is one of those things when you first hear about it that you go, oh my goodness, this is huge. And I just say to all of us, to myself and everyone else out there, this is Saturn Pluto. And this is a, a very fine example of how, <clears throat> excuse me, we can expect this energy to sort of manifest. So there's going to be a whole bunch of these landmark landscape moments in this next year and a half, good two years. And we are going to witness them. So buckle up for the ride and pay attention to your own life and look at where these things are happening and, you know, what do you need to do to ensure that you get through this in one piece and that you do the right things for yourself in your life and that you empower yourself in the right way and that you rebuild the structures that need to be rebuilt that are valuable and cast away the ones that are not internally, of course. Some people really are going to renovate their house or their property, but in the meantime, we are going to embrace the restructuring of something in our lives, the renaissance of something in our lives. But first, there's the, the old has to go away before we can rebuild. So that being said, we move forward into the week and we talk about a number of things happening this week. One of the things is we have a full moon, another full moon on the 19th, which is Friday. And it occurs at 7.12 a.m. Eastern Time, right before the moon goes void for about an hour and a half. And this full moon is at 29 Libra, which means the sun is at 29 Aries. Now, what happened last month? 
Well, about the 20th of March, remember when we had our wonderful solstice, um, the equinox, excuse me, we had the spring equinox. Uh, we had a full moon at zero degrees Aries with zero degrees Libra. So there was the sun at zero Aries, there was the moon at zero Libra, and now we are closing the door on that period, which is the period of the Aries Libra full moon. And it's 29 degrees, the last degree of those signs. So it's finishing up that cycle, which is pretty amazing. This rarely happens. You know, it could have been a little further on in Aries that we had, you know, when the full moon occurred in, in Libra, but instead we had something very early and now very late. So while I guess this is not considered a blue moon because it's not in the same month, um, they are in the same signs. So think about that full moon. Think about what you needed to do and think about how you're going to feel this week when you are experiencing this full moon at 29 Libra. Now, let me tell you this little secret. We just talked about Saturn and Pluto. Saturn and Pluto met at 29 Libra together in the same place at the same time in the 80s at 29 Libra. And so that is what we call an astrological famous point. And if you know anything historically and you were around then and you were an adult and experiencing things, there were things going on, uh, I know, with Israel and, and a number of things going on at that time in the, in the early to mid 80s. But, but what's interesting is that it's a Saturn Pluto special degree of the zodiac. And we're having that Saturn Pluto special degree of the zodiac show up on Friday. And I'll tell you this, if you remember the election of 2000, and everybody remembers the election of 2000 in the United States, Mercury was retrograde at 29 Libra, and it went direct at 29 Libra, the day of the election. It was going direct, it was retrograde stationing direct the day of the election at 29 Libra. And if you remember, there was a lot of issues. There were a lot of issues about who was going to be the president and so here we are, we're going to have a full moon at 29 Libra, reminding us of that election, reminding us of 1983, and certainly that election of 2000 then led us into 2001, which was a Saturn Pluto year. So... Think about those things. Think about what was going on for you. Think about what was going on politically because there was a lot of uh, fighting in the Middle East as a result of 2001. And that's what I'm going to tell, tell you. At 29 Libra, that is the end of Libra. That is where Libra finishes and Scorpio begins. And that is where the moon is going to go at uh, 40 a.m. on Friday morning. Eastern time into Scorpio. Now, what's interesting about this is, you know, um, when we sort of say goodbye to Libra, we're, we're looking at back at this last month and we're thinking about what we've accomplished and what we've done and what's happened. And it's been, it's been very powerful. So pay attention, pay attention to what happened uh, back at the full moon at zero and compare it to what happens now at the full moon at 29. So, in the meantime, Mercury is tomorrow going into the sign of Aries, and actually in not so many hours from now, it's going to be 2.01 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's going to be midnight my time here in Costa Rica, but it's going into Aries, which means it's going to hit the point that the full moon was at at mid-March on the 20th. So, it's going to hit that zero degrees, sorry where the sun was at um, during the full moon. So it's going to hit that zero degrees. And Mercury's been in Pisces all these months. Mercury's been in Pisces for a while. But retrograde in Pisces at 29 degrees, which is where it is right now. So when it went retrograde on the 5th of March, it went retrograde where it is now. 29 Pisces. And this is the first time in all these months, because it was busy in February, um, in, in Pisces, uh, in these months, it's the first time that it's going to finally go into Aries. So we're done. 
Mercury is going to be out of its shadow. So the Mercury retrograde things are going to bring light. The uh, full moon is getting triggered again. So we're having another full moon, but we're having Mercury tomorrow trigger zero Aries, which is where the sun was during that full moon. So this is all going to be very interesting. And we're going to review the full moon and we're going to think about what we were doing that week and what could potentially grow from our experience and how we are, um, how are we all working with that energy? Aries. Aries is the firefighter. They are the, the warrior. They are the innovator. They are the first. They are the trailblazer. They're going to step in first. And so Mercury steps in first tomorrow and goes to Aries and visits this fire sign for the rest of April and until May 7th. And then Mercury is going to eventually go into Taurus. But right now, he's in Aries. And he's going to zip through Aries. And he's going to trailblaze. And he's going to give us some answers. Because remember, Mercury's got answers for us. And to questions that we've probably been pondering while the retrograde was going on during Pisces. So you're going to feel your mind wake up tomorrow fiery with the fiery sign of Aries, and you're going to feel that energy surge through your brain, and you're going to be feeling the mood to innovate and to initiate and to start and to do things and to get excited because it's fire. Yeah. And so we like this because we got to have some fire in the sky out there with Jupiter. So now we're going to have, for the next few days anyway, we're going to have a couple of planets in fire. We're going to have Mercury in fire. We're going to have the sun in fire. We're going to have Jupiter in fire. And they are doing their fiery thing. And it's, it, this, is, this is waking up your mind. This is your mind coming alive. It's like springtime for the mind because Mercury's been kind of sleepy in Pisces all this time. But remember the retrograde. Remember what you experienced. Remember what you learned about yourself. Remember what you pondered. And you went back and reviewed and, and remember I told you to listen during that retrograde because we had to listen very carefully and subtly because Mercury's been in Pisces giving us intuitive messages, not necessarily obvious ones, but very sensitive, intuitive ones. So pay attention to that Mercury. Mercury's been very busy lately. And another thing is that the sun goes into Taurus on Saturday. So now it's annual visit to the sign of Taurus. It goes 4.55 a.m. Eastern time. And as you may or not, may not remember, Uranus has recently entered Taurus for good. And that means the sun is going to be approaching Uranus. So that will happen on Monday, which is Earth Day, uh, the 22nd. The sun and Uranus will conjunct 7.05 p.m. Eastern time. And this is exciting. So as soon as the sun goes into Taurus, which is a very nice calm Earth sign, it's going to get zapped with electricity. So we've got some interesting energetic planets happening these next few days. It's interesting because, you know, Mercury's going to do that Aries thing and it's hitting that sun full moon spot and then we're getting a full moon at 29 degrees and then we're having you know we have the sun going to approach uranus which is very powerful and when the sun comes to uranus there's that electric electricity there's that innovation there's that brightness that there's the spark and the dynamic energy so this is the next few days could be very exciting could be very breakthrough oriented and we love a breakthrough so look for that breakthrough where can you have a breakthrough where do you want a breakthrough where does Taurus fall in your chart that you can have a breakthrough these next few days because the sun will approach Uranus conjunct Uranus and then connect with Uranus over the next few days after that so this is rather exciting and we want to encourage that breakthrough. Taurus is not traditionally associated with breakthroughs. You know, you think of breakthrough, you think fire energy, you think maybe air energy, Aquarius, or Gemini or something. You don't necessarily think of Taurus, which is a very earthbound, deep sign in, in, the, in the deep earth sense. For you to be breaking through, hmm, 
Well, maybe you're going to break through something very, that was very stuck because I'm not saying that Taurus is always stuck so much, but they are very, very earthbound people and Taurus itself, any planets in Taurus are very, very earthbound and slow. And they take their sweet time to get to where they're going and to, to evolve, you know, to where they really need to be. And so when the sun and Uranus meet in Taurus, this is like, wow, we're going we're gonna to shake up the landscape. We are going to shake up the landscape. And so the landscape's getting a lot of shaking these days. And so we pay attention to that because wherever one degree Taurus falls in your chart, you are going to feel one degree, two degrees, two degrees Taurus, feel that landscape shaken up and how it, how it plays out in your life and how it manifests and how it gives you a new zest for life, perhaps, in your chart, where, where it can bring an aha, epiphany, illuminating moment. That's a good Uranus breakthrough. So never fear. Look for that breakthrough. Encourage that breakthrough. Remember, before we go into Taurus, we're still in Aries. And, and in fact, on the 20th, when the sun goes into Taurus, its ruler of Taurus, Venus, goes into Aries at 12, 11 p.m. Eastern time. So and that means Venus is going to hit that full original full moon point from last month after Mercury hits that original full moon point from last month. And we've got Venus ruling Taurus. And then, you know, everybody's answering to Venus in Aries. So the sun is going to answer to Venus. Uranus is going to answer to Venus. In Aries, where, you know, she's a little spitfire, you know, the goddess is a spitfire. So this is going to be some very interesting energy these next couple days. I don't think it's bad energy. I don't think we should look at this and go, oh my God, not this. I think this is exciting. I think that you have to get passionate. You have to embrace your passions and you've got to go for it because this is what we're waiting for you know these are some moments we've been waiting for things are moving forward they're getting out of the realm of the retrograde that mercury was in we're going to break through with uranus we're really like we're really moving forward now we're not flagging behind and this is this is important to pay attention to because the personal planets are what's moving forward the outer planets are going to start slowing down and that means so we've already seen Jupiter go retrograde, and we'll come back to that one in a minute. But we are going to see Pluto go retrograde next week on the 24th. So every year, Pluto goes retrograde for about six months, and in October, it will turn around and be direct. Now, when we start seeing a lot of things turn retrograde, because Saturn's going to go at the end of the month, we start to know that this is a time to do internal work. And this is a time when we take in and we pay attention to what's going on within and then when everything turns direct later in the year, and you know, Jupiter will turn direct in August, Saturn and Pluto, it's going to be an autumn thing, north. These are, these are times to pay attention to because we, we can collect and gather and study and evolve and get deep in these months. Now, Jupiter going retrograde, which was a week ago, Jupiter going retrograde is, you know, we always think of Jupiter's expansion. And... It is expansion. It's just expansion on an internal level. And since it's in its own sign of Sag, it's a philosophical thing. And it's a, it's a beautiful, abundant thing. But it's also a time to really pay attention to your inward expansion, where your consciousness gets raised, where your awareness of self comes alive. And then you can bring it out into the world and make it happen, you know, in August. So whatever, you know, the idea is to go within, talk to yourself, get connected to the inner expansion, and then bring it out into the world. And, sh and, and then you take a leap forward in your actual physical life when Jupiter goes direct later in the year. On a practical note, a lot of astrologers will say, you know, this is a this is a buyer's market, not a seller's market. So yes, if you're trying to sell your house, it might be a little slow. 
if you're trying to sell any valuables, you might want to wait until August to do that, unless there's a rush. But really, this I see as a time of inward expansion and time paying attention to one's inner core value. You know, Jupiter is about value as much as, you know, Venus is. Jupiter is about how we value ourselves too and how we expand our awareness of our own self. And wherever Jupiter is falling in your chart, wherever Sagittarius is now, that's where you're doing this inner expansion. So pay attention to that. Think about that. Open to it. Jupiter's friendly, you know. It's, it's a great time to expand internally. And, uh, you know, and I mean that consciously, consciousness. You know, you can start a meditation practice. You can start something where you're moving a little more slowly, but you're very attentive in a zen-like, in a zen-like way. Going with the flow. But Pluto will retrograde next week and on the 24th. And we will talk more about that next week. But, you know, it's, it's really an amazing thing. Pluto, too. Pluto is, you know, this is the, the planet of, you know, it's the planet of the underworld. So he's going into the underworld for the next few months. So that underworld thing is going to really, really happen over these next months. And so when he and Saturn are greeting each other in the underworld, because Saturn's going to retrograde, too, they are going to sort of connect and conspire and, and help us again, go internally and find that, those core senses of, of empowerment. So it's very, very interesting time. Very interesting time. In the meantime, we are experiencing right now the moon is in Virgo, a very practical place for the moon. It's going to go void overnight. So it's going to go void at like 12.30 a.m., Eastern time to 7.22 a.m. Eastern when it goes into Libra. When the moon goes into Libra, it's going to make those aspects. And I remember what I said last week. Once a week, we're going to have the moon in a cardinal sign, and it's going to connect with Saturn and Pluto. So it's going to do the Saturn-Pluto thing on Thursday, the 18th, where it squares Saturn, and then it squares Pluto. So it's kind of moving between the two of them squaring. It's not in between them physically. That we're going to get on the 25th when it's in Capricorn, like last month. So we're going to see these experiences of Saturn and Pluto come alive. It's going to trigger them, but we pay attention and do pay attention because last week they were in Cancer. We had a lot of aspects and I certainly felt the Teutonic shift <laughs> last Friday and felt the ground shift from under me. And I, I mean that not in the earthquake sense for change. Um, but I can tell you that we've got another level of this. So every week we have to think about up-leveling our lives, as I've mentioned many times before. And so it's Thursday. You're going to work through this. You're going you're gonna to take that day and you're going to pay attention to where Saturn and Pluto are speaking to you. And remember their theme. This is a theme in your chart and everybody else's chart in the charts of your loved ones and the charts of your country. So we are going to really connect with that while the moon is in Libra. And then it's going to be full on Friday in the morning. So the things to take away from this week are the full moon for sure. Um, we're still in that Saturn Pluto. Full moon's going to be a 29 Libra, which reminds us of the Saturn Pluto of 1983. There's Mercury going into Aries. Hurrah, leaving its shadow behind tomorrow. Venus going into Aries on Saturday, the 20th. The sun going into Taurus and then right away meeting Uranus. So these are, these are exciting energies. This is a bit thrilling. Take the energy and use it. Lots of fire. Lots of electricity, make something happen. Get, ex get excited. Get excited about your own empowerment. Get excited about your inner expansion. And get excited about what's next and how you can expand your world and your life and grow during this amazing Saturn Pluto that we're going to have that is going to change the landscape. And that's it. Thank you for listening. I'm Deb McBride. My website is debmcbride.com. My Twitter is at Deb Astrology, as is my Instagram. 
I'm here on speaker every week, you can give me uh, an email, deb at debmcbride.com, if you would like an astrology session with me, as that is what I do. And I welcome all astrological queries in that realm. Thank you so much. Have a good week. Happy Easter, if that's your thing.